All right. Hey, everyone. Um, <laughs> so take uh, two in terms of looking at some alternatives to Autodesk Inventor. And in this video, we're going to take a look at Onshape. So Onshape is one that I do not have a lot of experience with. Um, I remember early on when they started, I tried out their software and it was definitely capable at the time. Um, but I've definitely been seeing a lot of uh, recommendations of using it and um, using it in place of Autodesk Inventor and how it has some definite similarities. So on their website, uh, you can see they've got some animations going and there's definitely a lot of features in it and uh, they do have it set up for education. But probably the biggest thing about it is this is a web browser based program, which means uh, it runs on Mac, it runs on Windows, and um, I was even able to log in on my cell phone and I've seen people tell me that uh, it works really well on Chromebooks. So as long as you've got a modern browser, um, Chrome, um, Opera, Firefox, um, Windows, uh, uh, Microsoft's versions, it looks like it's very capable of running on pretty much any browser you've got. And uh, we can see right here, they're even showing it off uh, on an iPhone. So stuff that I've noticed about it uh, early on. Uh, they definitely have some good uh, videos and some explanations of what it does. But one of the things that kind of caught my attention is they have a very big uh, platform of self-paced lessons, uh, how you can go ahead and get a lot of introductions to it. And in the ones that I've looked at so far, um, let's see, go into CAD basics. Um, it actually helps keep track of like what you've already looked at, uh, how you can already get started. And in it, it's uh, very video based, um, which makes sense for a lot of CAD software. But you can see kind of the general outlines of what it's going to cover, uh, which makes it uh, searchable. So if you're having troubles, so even though I haven't seen it a lot in terms of like YouTube tutorials, um, it's definitely out there and uh, looks like the lessons are pretty good. The, the ones that I've tried out so far have been pretty much on point and um, could be helpful for you. So in terms of actually creating one, um, we're actually going to kind of jump straight into it. And like I said, it's been a while since I've used this one. It's not been a regular one, um, but I definitely understand how people are saying that it's similar to Inventor um, from their experiences or how it's easy to go ahead and kind of change over. So we're going to go ahead and create a document. Um, basically their equivalent of a part file and uh, as you've seen in my um, other videos we're going to be doing it as a uh, keychain fob so so um, if you aren't already aware of it I've got the instructions the technical drawings and for me at least I've got them up on a different window so I'm going to skip some of the uh, the introduction side of it uh, since I've already gone through that, but they obviously make it easy for you to go ahead and adapt it. And we see a lot of the same sort of features. So we've got the equivalent of our browser, um, the features, the extrusions that we do. Uh, we can see some of the other part windows down on the bottom. And of course, we've got a ribbon that has a lot of tools available. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with the traditional method. We're going to create a sketch on the front plane. And one thing that I'm noticing is you need to be very explicit about what you want it to show you in terms of your view cube. And it doesn't necessarily have a click and drag of the view cube. You have to choose corners and edges uh, to go ahead and change your views, which some of you may be comfortable with. That's uh, typically what I actually do within uh, Inventor and other CAD software I use, but I know some of you tend to like clicking and dragging to go ahead and position it. So, same thing is available. Uh, it gives us multiple options of drawing circles. In this case, we're going to go ahead and start from an origin point, and we can't instantly type in a value to dimension it. Uh, we click a second time to go ahead and get a rough placement, but for this one, after you tell it the rough location, you can go ahead and then type in the value that you want. So in this case, I wanted to be a 1.25 inch diameter, and it goes ahead and does the dimensioning for me. We'll then go ahead, finish up the sketch, a uh, little checkbox within the, uh, the sketch window that pops up, and then we can go ahead and do an extrusion. 
Uh, one thing I've noticed is that it does have some short keys, uh, just like Inventor does, but it needs to be a bit more explicit. You need to tell it uh, with a shift E that you would want to do an extrusion, whereas in Inventor or a dedicated program, you can usually just hit E or another defined shortcut. So not being able to see it uh, from the front view, um, it is not automatically changing the, uh, the views for me. So I can tell it that I want the circle to go ahead and extrude 0.1 inch from my dimensions. And it's not automatically updating, but it usually is updating fairly quickly once you tell it its commands. So just be aware that you're not going to preview everything like you are in Inventor and Fusion 360. So continuing on, we're going to do another sketch. Um, similar concepts, uh, rather than switching to front view, I'm going to kind of keep working from this uh, home view. And we're going to tell it that we want the outer circle to be part of our sketch. So in this case, we need to use the, let's see, I'm trying to remember what the tool name was, uh, since there are some variations of the names. Um, ah, here we are under the use to go ahead and tell it that we need to use the outer circle and then we're going to create a second circle the inner one using the same technique so we have to give it a rough placement and then we can type in the in this case 1.1 inch measurement so with that done we can go ahead and finish up the sketch do the extrusion tell it the part we want to extrude and that that needs to be 0.05 so next up, we're going to talk about some of the uh, geometric constraints so, uh, in placing the hole. So hit the wrong command. So sketch, select the face. I'm going to switch to the front view on this case. And then tell it that I'm going to create a circle, again, off to the side with a 0.125 inch diameter um, shape. And then our dimensioning tools, we can go ahead and tell it that we want a vertical constraint from center point of the circle we just created to the origin. It'll go ahead and change the location. And then we can use the dimensioning tool, in this case, the kind of usual D that we've used. And we're going to tell it that I want it to be 0.175 inches from the top edge. Finish up the sketch, do the extrusion, we can tell what we want. And then we need to be, again, a bit more decisive. Um, we need to be more careful with what we're telling it. Uh, it doesn't make assumptions quite the same way that Autodesk does. So we want to remove the material and we re want to remove all of it. Um, we can tell dimensions just like uh, we could before up to different faces, but through all is going to be the best one in this case. And we can see that that's taken care of. So the last little part of the keychain fob, as usual, is we're going to go ahead and apply some text. And what I've noticed is, again, we don't get the same preview that we did before. So we can try and place a rough spacing and that we can tell that this is the on shape keychain and notice that there's no options for like how big okay so once we go ahead and create it it uses its default shape based on the the rectangle that we drew um, sometimes that could be small sometimes it could be big so the next part for us is to go ahead and place it and that's where we need to go ahead and use some of the geometries so Within Inventor, we could go ahead and click and drag. Um, in this case, hit escape a couple of times. We actually need to hit one of the, let's see. Make sure I'm in the right space. So in the sketch, we can go ahead and adjust the placement. And it looks like some constraints got to be uh, applied. So in this case, we need to show the constraints. 
we need to go ahead and make sure that they get deleted. Um, there we go. And then to adjust size, we need to be able to use the dimensioning tool. Uh, so dimension tool, we can tell that for the uh, top size, we want it to be about, uh, let's bring it down to 0.15 because we've got a bit of text. And then to go ahead and help us center it, we can use some of the same commands. So we're going to create a line from center point to center point. We're going to actually select that, right click, and then tell it to be a, let's see. Ah make it a construction line. Like I said, not as used to this software as some of the others, but knowing the vocabulary is going to make it very easy uh, to go ahead and switch between the different CAD softwares. So using the symmetry tool, we can now say that the left and right side of the text are going to be connected to the origin point and went ahead and placed it for us. So from there, we could go ahead and adjust um, location. We could change, you know, how high up it is, either dimensioning or some click and drags. But happy with that, we're going to go ahead and finish up that sketch, go back to our home view, zoom in a little bit, and we can turn off some of the uh, origin locations as we need to. And then create the last little extrusion of 0 0.05 to go ahead and create the part. So, as I mentioned, um, very similar to what we've seen in Fusion 360, what we've seen in Inventor, what you may have seen in some other CAD software you've used. Um, and because this is web-based, you, know, you should be able to use this on just about any internet-connected device you've got. Uh, but you need to be a bit more um, detailed in terms of how you actually enter that in. It's a lot more step-by-step clicking uh, specific components to go ahead and make the changes that you need. But um, again, in my limited experience with it, it definitely seems to have a lot of the same functionality we've had. Um, so hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives you a good introduction to the software. Like I said, it looks like they've got an awesome uh, learning system. Uh, so you can actually learn a lot about both CAD and their software um, in particular. So um, I definitely encourage you, you know, find some objects um, in your home or that uh, you've seen in some of your assignments. Definitely play around with the software because there's learning how to use CAD software is probably one of the most important things I want you to get out of uh, my engineering classes because it's a skill that I use in a lot of different ways, a lot of different opportunities. Um, and I think it helps you think about how things are actually made in the, uh, the real world. So. Hopefully this is uh, giving you a bit of a head start in terms of some more CAD projects and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.